What's going on guys? I'm back to make this video to recap UFC Fight Night in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is going to be a quick video and then also moving forward my videos will probably be a little quicker too. I did not realize it was damn near a 20 minute video on the last video I uploaded so yeah. So anyway yeah moving forward videos will be a little quicker. Um, but yeah if you were tailing my bet that I made for this UFC Fight Night you will know that I went two out of five. Um, so let, let's go ahead. Let's just go ahead and break it down. Let's go ahead and break down what happened. So as you can see, I got the first two right. Uh, Nas Rat versus Jared Gordon and Renat. I got that right. Then it kind of went downhill, man. I'm going I'm to break down these fights individually, man. Uh, just so I can see where I went wrong and y'all can see where I went wrong um, and also my again my thoughts going into the fight and then also how the fight ended up playing out so yeah with this first fight Nasrat versus Jared Gordon uh, in the previous video I'm pretty sure I mentioned that I thought this would be a pretty boring fight I'm not gonna say it was boring but it did go exactly how I thought it would go Jared Gordon putting the pressure on him but Nasrat uh, winning the striking exchanges. But Jared Gordon did do really well in the striking exchanges too, and he definitely showed improvement. Uh, I think that is a blueprint of success if you're a wrestler and when you can also fight behind the jab and have a pretty good, not, not like elite striking, but good striking. And But Nasrat was pretty good on his takedown uh, defenses and everything like that, and he won the striking exchanges, and I think that's what eventually gave him the, the victory. I don't know what the scorecards were, uh, but, you know, I thought it was a pretty good fight. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh, started the night off good. Went one for one. Uh, let's let's go let's go to the next one. Okay, and then the next fight we had Renat uh, versus Nicholas Dalby. Um, I think also kind of went the way I expected. Um, Renat, you know, he puts the pressure on. He's such a good grappler. Again, similar to what I said about Jared Gordon, when you are an elite grappler and you and you have a decent striking game, I mean that's a blueprint for success in my opinion. Like, let I me mean, look at Kamaru Usman. I mean, he improved a lot on his striking um, ability, and that only enhanced his wrestling and made him more of a threat. Uh, but for Renat, yeah, he. I mean, surprisingly, he was winning the striking exchanges. I think, I think Nicholas won on one of the judges scorecards or one around or something like that but uh you could tell we're not he his striking has room for improvement that man was just winging shots but he was landing um and i think it's his grappling ability is what you know kept uh nick on his back foot um and ultimately played into Renat's game so yeah started the night off good two for two all right let's go to the next one all right, and then on his next fight, god damn, we had Johnny Walker versus Volkan Ostemir. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I picked Johnny Walker in this one, but my man's got knocked out in the most vicious way possible. And I don't know what, what it is about Johnny Walker, man. The way When he gets knocked out, that man really gets knocked out cold and in the most disgusting ways, man. And this was no different. And, of course, I definitely thought this would be a possibility. But I also thought Johnny Walker, like I said in the previous video, you know, switch camps. You know, seemed like he's in a different mindset. The antics kind of cooled down a little bit. But his antics did kind of show itself in the beginning of the fight. And Volkan, and Volkan, he showed from the jump. He ain't here to mess around. He ain't here to play. He's here to fight. And he showed it from the jump. I mean, damn, did Johnny Walker even land a punch? Like, it's crazy. Um... Yeah, Volkan finished him with a vicious knockout. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't see that coming. I mean, I definitely thought that was a possibility, but, oh, man. Of all the fights that I thought would ruin my bet, I didn't think this would be the one, though. But at the same time, I'm not really surprised. I'm not, I'm not really surprised, man. And I even said in that previous video, like I said, I'm not that big fan of Johnny Walker. I think he's a little overhyped, but... Obviously, I, I thought the man was improving. I thought he was, you know, changing up. But uh, hopefully, hopefully he does good. Uh, or hopefully he gets, you know, back in there, you know, 
get you know stays the course. Again, I think he is improving. Overhyped, but I think he is improving. But Volkan, yeah, this is a good win for him though. Very good win for him. Not saying it puts him in title contention, but I mean I definitely think it puts him on a short list of fighters, you know, to start, you know, possibly, you know, main eventing some fights, some fight nights, uh and getting some big matchups up there in the top five for sure. So yeah, this was the first domino to fall of my of my bet slip. All right, and so the next domino that fell was Kevin Gastelum and Daniel Rodriguez. Now, I got a little bit of mixed emotions about this particular fight. Obviously, Kelvin got the the decision victory, but I don't know. That, you know, D Rod, he's a that just shows how much of a killer this dude is. This man, Kelvin Gastelum, came over a hella overweight, asking to change to do a catch weight, and now it, then it eventually settled on a middleweight bout when it's supposed to have been a welterweight bout. So my man was already cutting weight. You know, he was already. I think they. I think they said that he was like, you know, one seventy seven or one seventy six. Come like I think uh, like Thursday, when they eventually changed it to middleweight, and. And Kelvin Gaston hadn't even broke 180. Like, that is that's tragic. That is tragic. And I don't know how much fighters be cutting weight in the middle of the night like they normally be doing. But, you know, but I, and I don't know. But it just, it just seems like you're already notorious for not making weight. I, 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 you would think, you know, you would have changed your ways, you know, to, you know, make sure the weight comes off easier even during fight week. So this was, so yeah, I had mixed, emo, mixed emotions about this, but either way, about the fight though, I thought I thought it was 1-1 heading into the third round, in my opinion. I thought it was 1-1. I thought it was 1-1, but the odds makers, because you know, they showed the live odds. I think they had Kelvin Gastelum, uh, you know, had the odds of winning the fight. And that may be true, but I, I'm looking at the stats and I'll pull up. Um, well, these are the third rounds. Uh, this is the final stats, but heading into the third round, I want to say D-Rod was, had outpointed him in strikes, you know? Um, and that's not to say much. I mean, it was pretty even, you know what I mean? So to say that it was like he was up 2-0, because a couple judges, I believe, gave him, you know, had him winning three rounds to none, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Two judges had him 30-27. One judge had him 29-28. So it's unanimous victory. So it's like you can't really debate that. But it's like, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe I'm showing my bias a little bit. But I just feel like either way, you know, this is this is a lose-lose for D-Rod. I mean, the man came in basically 15 pounds overweight, man. And, and my man was already cutting weight. You know, so hopefully... The UFC take care of my man, D-Rod. Um, Kelvin got the victory, so it is what it is, you know. So, yeah, whatever. It's cool. All right, next fight. All right, and the third fight that fucked up my parlay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the hell Sergey was doing. I'll be honest with you. I'm a, little, I'm, a little, I'm a little upset at that. You know, obviously, you would think at some point in your training camp, you fought a guy who was a little bit taller. So you can learn how to mix it in to get in the range. You obviously are not going to win, you know, kickboxing range with Volkan, man. Like he's six foot, he's six foot thirteen, man. Come on, what are you talking about? Like he waited way too long. I mean, there was some times where he landed, but like it was like the end of his punches. So like Volkan, so it wasn't really landing clean. And meanwhile, Volkan piecing my boy up, like. I, he ain't never been exposed like this. Maybe since, you know, uh, his first fight against Overeem. You know, and, and that was a first-round knockout. So, yeah, Sergey kind of got exposed a little bit, man. But I, I, it's tough to say because this might just be, you know, it's, it's Volkan. He's six foot seven. Not many people can get in that range. If you do, you, you got to, you know, you got to make sure you land clean because it's hard to mix in his range. And let's be real. Sergey is not that isn't a boxer. He's a power puncher. You know, 
similar to, to uh, Francis. So he needs to do what Francis did, mix in his boxing, maybe even learn a takedown or two or so you can at least threaten the takedown. You know, heavyweights aren't that good of wrestlers. So, yeah. So I'm a little mad about that one. You know what I'm saying? Of all of, of the three bets that I missed, I'm probably most pissed off about that one, though. Even though Kelvin got some bitch ass, went 15 pounds over. It is what it is. Uh, but, yeah, Sergey, come on, man. You got you got one thing. You're a one-trick pony. I think they even said that on a broadcast. You're a one-trick pony. And that one and that one trick ain't tricking right now, man. Come on, get with it. So, yeah, but we're moving forward, right? We're moving forward. Next week is UFC 303. Um, I will have a bet slip ready for FanDuel, and I mostly use Prize Picks because again, I live here in Texas, so FanDuel isn't legal here. So, I do prize picks. I'll probably submit some prize picks, uh, upload some bets I made on prize picks, and maybe even a better app to a uh, better uh, B E T R, the better app as well. So, all right, thank y'all for watching this video. And again, like I said, moving forward, I will try to keep these videos a little brief. Try to keep them under under ten minutes if I can. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment. Peace.